What's up, podcast listeners? On this next episode of the I Choose series, we have an opportunity to interview combat instructor and author Molotov Mitchell. I think what's most incredible about this episode is how Molotov explains that his job was to help people protect themselves from strangers, but couldn't help himself from himself. In this episode, we talk about depression, suicidal ideation, and the supernatural afterlife, outer body experience, and how he was brought back. An incredible episode you don't want to miss. Tremendous amount of value. Hope you enjoy. So, so I'm a combat instructor. Uh, that, that means that I, I, uh, I teach people how to fight, how to defend themselves, um, armed and unarmed. And um, uh, I'm a, a Krav Maga black belt. And I'm trained and certified in, in many places, uh, of course, including Israel. And um, I still go back there uh, rarely, but uh, for continuing training, continuing ed unlike any continuing ed class other people take, I'm sure. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm very passionate about helping people survive and about self-defense. Um, but to what you're referring, I, I also, uh, at, at one point in my life, you know, I, I um, had a real struggle with depression, not, not clinical depression, but I was just feeling very depressed. I was feeling very, very bad. Um, there were just a lot of things that were coming apart in my life and uh, my marriage was ending and I, I was just extremely uh, down. And, uh, and during that time, I didn't, uh, I didn't know self-defense. Uh, so I know how to, how to help people protect themselves from others, but I never learned how to protect myself from myself. And so that's uh, an interesting, for a guy who deals in self-defense, it was wild that um, ultimately uh, I struggled and struggled to the point that I, that I ultimately succumbed to suicide. And um, it's, it's a topic that's, that's very uh, pertinent to these days. A lot of people talk about it. I'm, I'm very passionate about helping people. I, I, um, I think that a lot of people don't really know how to address people that are struggling with suicide and, and people who've um, you know, struggle with uh, depression, that type of thing. And so I'm very passionate about that. But, but the long and short of it is this, I, I just made, uh, you know, uh, uh, mistakes in my life and ended up uh, paying the, the consequence. And ultimately, I, I did take my life. And um, uh, I was very fortunate that um, God had mercy on me. And uh, I was brought back. Uh, I was supposed to be gone. Um, specifically what had happened was I, I had cut my throat and um, I had specifically cut the jugular. And um, when I was uh, found, I, I, I was basically gone. And at that point, that's when I had a, a supernatural, uh, you know, uh, out of body journey. And um, when I came back, the doctors uh, were, were very um, surprised. And uh, they said that it, that it belonged in the miracle file. And that's how they put it. Wow. And, uh, and, um, so after that, uh, I had a, a new, a new take on things. And part of that is because of, uh, you know, surviving, but I'd say probably the bigger part of that was actually what I experienced while I was gone. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, I, you know, this whole, I choose thing, you know, one of them that we want to do is going to be a professional, you know, short film on, on suicide prevention, you know, mm. um, we want to do one that, that ends, you know, with the hashtag of I choose life, you know, because yeah. we're seeing, we're seeing an increase of this, um, suicide mm -hmm. ideation, um, people, you know, I was reading earlier today, you know, children, 11 years old, 11 years old, you know, ending their life over, mm -hmm. over something. Um, before yeah, we get I, the... I, I actually just, just read a, uh, yeah, just yesterday I was, I was, uh, talking to my fiance about this, but my heart just broke that there was a, um, that there was a 10 year old boy, African American boy who, uh, who hung himself because the kids had bullied him about his colostomy bag. I read that. Oh, and I just, um, wow. You know, it's, it's very, um, <laughs> I mean, I'm a very positive person. I'm a very happy person. I'm exuberant. I am hopeful about the future most of the time. Um, but stuff like that and the bullying and, and, you know, the tragedies like that are just, boy, they really take a toll on you, don't they? Yeah, man. I mean, I'm, look, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dad. 
I got kids yeah. of my own. And, um, mm. you know, I did it. I'm a filmmaker. So, I mean, I, I wrote a film a while ago called A Braveheart, the Lucy Velasquez Story, um, mm. which, you know, uh, was, it's a great film. You guys can watch it if you want. It's on Prime right now. And, oh, you know, yeah. it was all about it was all about, you know, bullying and overcoming the bullying and, and that kind of stuff. And um, I just feel like, man, I feel like life is so precious. Like it's it's such a yeah. precious yeah. gift. And Absolutely. for somebody to to just end it. I mean, I feel like we're just in a place right now where there's a lot of hopelessness in the world. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll tell you, there's, there's, um, there are, there are a lot of, uh, reasons uh, for people to, to, uh, succumb to, to that darkness and that specific, yeah. uh, situation or, or, or what I like to say is losing to yourself. Um, the truth is entropy is real. And everything is burning out and everything is, is spinning out of control. And, and the truth is, um, without God in your life, um, it's all chaos. It's all chaotic. And, I, and I'm telling you, as a person who believed in God, even Christians, even people who, who do have faith, they can still uh, fall into this trap, as I did. Uh, the, the truth is there is, a, there is a real evil in the world. I don't believe that it's an intangible force. I believe that it's personified. I believe that there are real sentient beings uh, that that are uh, plotting against us, you know, demons. And uh, I believe that, that it, as Christians, of course, this is the crux of things. We have to trust in Christ. We have to, to fall on the mercy of Jesus and ask for his help. And I think that that's why uh, programs like Alcoholics Anonymous, for instance, are, are so effective, whereas so many other things are not, is, is they recognize that there is a higher power out the gate. Mm. Because the truth is, if you think you're alone in this fight, and it, like I said, I, whether you believe or not, it doesn't matter because these, these forces are real. This, this is a, a real thing. Um, if you don't believe that there's a higher power and you're just on your own, you're done for. You're yeah. a goner. Yeah. And the truth is God loves you. God cares about you. God made you. He wants to know you more than anything, right? So uh, call out to him. When, when, you're, when you're at the brink, I, I just, you know, for anybody who's struggling, I just have to say this. I know like we're having a conversation, but my heart just wells up for people. You've got to call out for God. You've got to call out for his help. Um, and then additionally, we have to help each other. Yeah. And I think that's probably where a lot of the breakdown happens with yeah. people. Yeah. You know, earlier this week, I wanted to throw up on the I choose page. I just, I just asked the question, how many of our followers consider faith an important part of their life? You know, and we had, mm -hmm. uh, we had 502 people. We reached 89 engagements and we yeah. had about, you know, a couple of comments here, lots of likes and loves and stuff. I would say mm -hmm. the majority of people that we reached out to um, did did believe that faith was important as, as part of their their well being. Yeah. The reason I was asking that is because you know, kind of selfishly, I'm on my own journey, and um, mm -hmm. you know, people ask me all the time, you know, oh, Mike, what's your relationship with God? Because I say, oh yeah, I'm a faith guy. And they say, what's your relationship with God? I say, oh, it's like my relationship with anyone else. It has its ups and its downs, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. And that's that's sure. the truth. That's the reality. Yeah. You know, there are some days where it's like. I'm there. And then there are some days when I'm not. And I, and I, and I like to reflect on it. And that, and what brings me this comfort is saying that no matter how many times I've turned my back on him, he's never turned his back on me. Amen. That's right. You know? That's so, right. <laughs> yeah. Something Preach Mike. About. Preach. <laughs> It's true. Well, thanks, true. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's real, it's real easy to like, I mean, you know, so as a conservative, uh, as somebody who's very uh, uh, dedicated to helping people in the real world defeat real threats, you know, like, I mean, uh, you know, this, this past year was all about guns. I don't know if you, if you, if you're aware or not, but, you know, I uh, set the world record for fastest handgun defense, you know, snatching that gun away like that. So, uh, you know, everything that we do is really focused on helping people uh, survive. Mm. But uh but there's, there's, a, there's another enemy out there. There's another level of combat that Scripture even refers to very clearly when it says that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the powers and the principalities. So it's, it's good that, that, that we just acknowledge that. I mean, I, I, some people are like, oh, you know, just you know, stick to the, you know. It's kind of like I was listening to uh, Rush Limbaugh today, uh, and he was saying, you know, like he was talking about this recent uh, abortion thing, you know, that, that, you know just passed this horrible, horrible 
born alive abortion law. You know about this, right? In New York. I'm a New Yorker. I know all about it. Well, then, then you know. Yes, of course. I'm so sorry. Uh, but anyway, but he, he was saying just today, he was like, you know, he's const- he said this on the air. He's like, I, I, for years, everybody just said, just shut up about the social issues. Just shut up about faith. Just shut up about. And I'm just telling you that, that he was saying, you know, like, we can't concede anything mm. because there's, there's, there's real evil in the world that's pushing back. And I, and I it just, you know, that's how I feel sometimes. It's like I'm a very practical guy. I'm yeah. extremely down to earth. Yeah. But the truth is, we, if we ignore all of that, then, then we're going to suffer for it. Yeah. So tell me about this. So you are at a place in your life. It's a dark place. You take your, yeah. you take your own life and yeah. you have an experience. Start from there. Yes. So, um, yeah, it was a uh, dark day. Um, I, um, yeah, I, I, uh, cut and, um, and then I, um, I laid down in the shower and, uh, and I bled out and, um, and I left my body. Mm. It's <laughs> sounds crazy. Like, you know, thinking about it, it's almost just like what you see in the movies. I guess probably because it's based on real experiences um, of where people can see their body and they're, they're lifting up and up and then, uh, and then lifting up through the ceiling. And, and even as I was lifting up, I saw paramedics rushing in and picking me up. And, and interesting fact, um, after when I was recovering in the hospital, they asked me to tell them, you know, what I experienced. And I told them this stuff, you know, just pretty candidly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they, they said that they were really shocked. There's no way that I could have seen that those paramedics did what they did because it was highly unorthodox. They were just desperate to try to correct the situation. And I saw a few things that they did and described them. With that, there's no way I could have known that. Mm. Um, and, then, and then I was in the light. And um, that's, that's where things um, became more um, peaceful. I, so let me ask you a question, just to clarify. Yeah. For people who were watching, who are just tuning in, you definitely sure. want to tag your friends and, and, and listen up because it's about to get really, really interesting here. Molotov um, is in a place right now where the paramedics are over him, and you're actually seeing this. Are you seeing yes. it from above, looking down? Yes, looking straight down, yes. Correct. Okay, do you, and you see your own body as well? Yes, yeah. Okay. Do you have any feelings in that moment? Are you feeling anything like regret or fear or happiness, bliss, anger, sadness. Is there anything, do you, do you remember any of that? Yeah, of course. At that moment, as I was seeing uh, the, the paramedics uh, trying to uh, uh, keep me alive, um, I didn't feel anything at all. But the last thing that, that I did as I was dying was because I do fear God and, and uh, specifically I, uh, I fear hell. <laughs> um, I died repenting, continually repenting. Um, and, uh, and then after I saw the, the paramedics there, and then I, I was, there was a light I was, I was in the light. And then I was, uh, this is where it's, it's kind of difficult because this is, it's difficult for me to remember, uh, what order things were happening because it was outside of time. And yeah. I know this is probably very difficult for, for you know, people to, you know, get their head around, uh, but what happened was I met my, I saw my mother, I saw my brother, and they, they have gone on uh, before me, years before. And um, uh, I saw them. Most interestingly, uh, uh, everybody there was recognizable, but they were uh, uh, crystalline. Uh, if, you, if you look at, a, uh, probably the best way to describe it would be to look at uh, like a Swarovski, uh, you know, crystal, like a ball or something. It has like a million little facets in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, so you still see the people, but, but they're made of this crystal. And, um, and as you get close, uh, let, let me just say at the, at the very beginning, I, I'm not, I'm not a, a cult leader or anything. I don't have any, uh, <laughs> I don't have some guru book about this or whatever. And, and, and to be uh, quite transparent, just, I, I always say this, uh, um, that, this is what I experienced. And I don't say that this is what it is. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not trying to say this is scripture or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I of saw course. was every little facet within was made of a memory. And when you looked wow. closely, when you looked closely into that memory, 
you could see it come to life and then suddenly you were there in that memory experiencing it again and then wait was it your you, memory or their memory their memory everybody okay. has everybody so so long story short just to just to simplify yeah the what i learned i learned a few things but the, the biggest thing i learned was the meaning of time because keep in mind god created time um god is not you know, it's, it's like Steve Jobs is not inside the computer moving things around. God is not inside uh, the four dimensional time space continuum here. He is he is outside of it and he invents it uh, in the be in the beginning mm. is when God God invented beginnings. Um, he invented time. Mm -hmm. So outside of time. Um, he and and all of his children are living outside of time and looking into time. So every experience that you have in life, and this is one of the things that's, that's really just driven me and I, and I feel so happy and so fulfilled with life. Even when I face challenges, I still, when I can, of course, I, that doesn't mean that I don't feel sad, but when I feel bad or whatever, and I get my bearings and I remember why this is happening, the reason why we have time is all of the experiences that, that we have will be used to build the bodies that we live in for eternity. Or what well, I would call, yeah, what I would second. call, yeah. <laughs> Let's let everyone process that. The memories right. we build here in the time we have here builds right. our bodies over there. Yes, and that's, and just to simplify it, when I've explained it to people, I call it the ever suit. But what happens is time is literally the material that is used to build your perfect body that you'll live in forever. Wow. And God allows every experience that, that we go through because he knows that that's going to be a critical part of our ever suit that we will need to draw upon into eternity. And I don't know why. I don't know, I don't know what, what we're going to be doing with those experiences. Um, I didn't see that. But what I do know is, is that is why. That is why we have time. That is why we have these experiences, good and bad. So when you have that kind of perspective – even bad things, you can say, okay, that's all right. I'll, I'll absorb that. I can't wait to use that. That's, yeah. that's something that I'm going to use forever and ever. That's incredible, man. So you're in the light. You're there, and you're seeing these, these, these beings, people that you know. You know that they're your family members. You know it's your mother. You know it's your yes. brother. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay. And, and I'd, I'd say probably um, uh, I, I, I didn't meet God. Uh, God was there. His, 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 the presence of God was all around. There's, I have to say, the, the peace that I experienced was unlike any anything I've ever felt in life, mm. it, hands down. I mean, it was <laughs> unbelievable. It was if, yeah. if this. This is it. I mean, it was yeah. that was it. And um, I love being here. I do, but I also <laughs> long for the day, you know, that I'll be back in that peace. And, yeah. and uh, probably one of the wildest things was, was when I met myself in eternity. And because uh, this, is, this is, I think, uh, one of the things that's kind of interesting about I choose, uh, the idea that, that we also don't really choose, that, um, that everything that's going to happen has already happened. And when I met myself, my perfected self, outside of time, uh, it, it was, it was a, it's kind of a, a mind melting uh, experience, but I could see that all of these experiences were being built into me. And that's, that's who I was becoming. And then I was, but you sucked. weren't like built. You were like, you were completely built already. Yeah. Absolutely. And talking. Yes. I talked to myself. Yeah. Okay. And that's talked to my eternal self was talking to my temporal self in this moment. And, and my mother who had already gone to be with the Lord, uh, touched me and was praying for me. Now, I, I have no idea any theological implications or, or anything like what that means. Um, I'm not a theologian. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm a combat instructor. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, it, it, was, uh, it, it, was, it was probably the, the greatest aha moment of my life. And then suddenly I was sucked back. Uh, I was not too happy, by the way. <laughs> because I was dragged 
<laughs> almost by my hair, kicking and screaming back into a world uh, where everything was messed up and people were hateful. And, there, and you know, I, I literally came back. And, and interestingly, there, there weren't people that were sympathetic. A lot of the people that I had had as friends uh, were, were, they turned their back on me after that. And, you know, there, there were a lot of, it was really rough. Um, so in, in contrast, that perfect peace and even the, the, the mystery of it all was just so wonderful. And then to come back to something so gritty and for lack of a better term, effed up yeah. was, uh, was, was bracing. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm reading some of the comments while you're talking. Anthony had a question. Yeah. How, do, how do you know this was, um, how do you know this, like the difference between this and a dream? How would you not know? Like, I think he's asking, yeah, how would you know if this was a dream? That's, that's a great question. I, I um, I don't, uh, I, and I wouldn't, and I, I, there's no way to say, but I will tell you this. I, uh, it made a lot of sense. Um, when I came back, I had a, a renewed, uh, relationship with God. I had a renewed sense of purpose. I also knew while, while I was there that, that one of my tasks on earth was to keep people alive so that their ever suits could be created and, they, and that they could continue on into eternity. And so I actually started keeping track. I actually have, uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I actually keep track of all of these students that I've trained who've had to use their training to survive real deadly encounters because of that training. Wow. And um, yeah, so at this point it's 34 and, and, and counting. And, um, and I'm passionate about that, about helping people live because I believe in life and I believe in life everlasting. I believe in what scripture calls the power of an indestructible life. And that's the life that I'm living. Man, I love that. First of all, I love what you're doing. I love the whole combat thing. I mean, I'm so into that. That's but great. Like, I, um, I definitely could use some training. Oh, well, come on down. <laughs> you know, hey, hey, North Carolina is here. Uh, it's, uh, it's got lower taxes. It's got friendly people and better food. So, you know, bring it. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> would you would you train on me? The maybe house. we could even maybe we could even film I would totally it. do that. Yeah. Absolutely. We could do the of whole course, film yeah. thing for it, you know. And for absolutely. anyone else who's Let's watching, we've got people watching from all over the country. So um if you're you know, if you want to learn more about Molotov Mitchell's training courses, uh, he's been doing this for a long time. And just to just yeah. to throw up some laurels, you're a black belt. Yeah. And keep it going. Go ahead. <laughs> List them for me. Oh well, yeah. I was, yeah. Um that's awkward. <laughs> no, do it. I'm I, asking you as the host. I so, um, yeah. So, so, um, okay. Um, yeah. So I, I was just inducted into the U S martial arts hall of fame this past year. Um, awesome. I, I, I set the world record for fastest, uh, handgun disarm, unarmed handgun disarm. Um, uh, that's, that's as far as Krav Maga goes. Of course, there's also shooting stuff and everything like that. And I'm in Mensa. Um, but probably the, 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 the biggest thing, the thing that I'm like most excited about is Greer Gunther. She just uh, uh, tagged in there. I'm so excited to be marrying her this year. I'm so thrilled. I love her. <laughs> love her to death. I love her better than any gun defense, and that's saying something. So, you know, she's the best. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us, Greer. I appreciate it. You guys are not married yet. You're, she's Beyonce? We're getting married in April. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks, man. It's going to be great. Yeah, yeah, super excited. That's awesome. That's incredible. All right, so you're zipped back. You're pulled back. Yes. You're here. And right. what happens next? Well, <laughs> that's uh, not as glorious. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's the road to, to restoration, you know. Mm. That's where uh, I really uh, struggled a lot, of course, because, you know, I mean, I – I had actually lost to myself because, um, uh, you know, I, my marriage had failed and I had, I had uh, failed all kinds of other ways. I just, it just blew it, you know? And, um, when I came back, I was still in that crap. I was still stuck in that time garbage, you know? Yeah. I was in ruins still. Yeah. And then on top of that, of course, now, you know, everybody knew that I, you know, committed suicide. It was like even worse. And of course I just, that escalated everything with friends and business. And, you know, I, I will tell people this, anybody who's struggling, um, there, there's, there's a, I'll say something. I know how many people want to say, I, I have to try to word this carefully because I don't, I don't want to give people the wrong impression. You need to get help. 
You need to talk to people. That's very important. But a lot of people don't talk because they're afraid that people will turn their backs on them, right? Mm -hmm. They're afraid that they'll, that they'll go, oh, you know, something's wrong with that person or, you know, they're, they're weak or whatever. You know, people don't like it. You know, it makes them uncomfortable yeah. for whatever reason. They're, they're, maybe they lost somebody else to suicide, whatever. And so people say, no, they won't. People will embrace you. People will love you. Your friends will rally around you. And, um, and I would say, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> they, they, they might actually freak out. They might, uh, they might not be cool. And uh, you, you find out who your real friends are at that point. And I kind of found out that most of my friends were, were not who I thought they were. I mean, and I understand to an extent because to them, I wasn't who they thought I was. You know, I, I get it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they had no idea I was dealing with all this dark stuff. And then, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But, but you, have to, you have to talk to people. But, but I would just advise people, don't just go out there with a megaphone or don't just like do some Facebook posts and you say, hey, everybody, I'm just feeling like shit. And I've just, I'm going to end it all. Okay, don't do that. Be thoughtful because that could actually make things even worse. What you should do is, is find somebody and privately meet with them. I know it seems like so obvious, right? But but it's not. When when you're lost in in these yeah. feelings and stuff, find somebody and just say, "Hey, can can we grab some coffee like right now? I'm really struggling." Yeah. And if they say yes, then they're probably going to be cool. And if they're like, "I'm pretty busy. Don't ever talk to them again about it." <laughs> yeah. That's my tip, okay? Because <laughs> if you t if you say, "I'm I really need some help." And they're like, uh, you know, I'm doing some stuff. Okay, that's not the person you want to open up to. So that's a, that's a good way to gauge it. But it, but long story short, I, I I did have a very long recovery back. Um, that's one of the reasons why uh, I asked Greer Gunther to marry me, <laughs> because she was instrumental in helping me recover and helping me um, uh, become whole again. You know, in in my social life and my business. Uh, you know, just being able to to be, you know, Molotov Mitchell again. Yeah. I love that, man. I love that. You know, um, man, we had a question um, from Sally. How did this experience change you? <laughs> wow. That's, that's a, that's a, yeah. I mean, I'm a completely different person. I have totally different goals in life. I have, I have a, a totally different level of, of sympathy and empathy for people that are hurting, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, is that something I, you didn't have before? Well, I was never like, I mean, I was never just like a jerk. You know, I mean, I wasn't, yeah. I mean, I'm sure some people would say I was, but like, I, I was never just some insensitive douchey guy. But now I, I have a, a very, I, I have a mission, you know, yeah, I, I yeah. want to help people, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, sometimes I have people like call me up. I'm definitely one of those people that, by the way, anybody who's my, who, who knows me, Feel free to call me anytime. I will go do the coffee. Absolutely. No question, you know, <laughs> and you can tell me anything because I mean, nothing's going to freak me out. Um, but yeah, I just have a, a renewed um, uh, love of life. I actually, I, I appreciate life much more. I appreciate the moments now because I understand why God invented them. Mm -hmm. um, I love my daughter. Uh, she's, it's been amazing watching her grow up and all the adventures uh, that we've had together. I, I, I do crazy adventures with her all the time, exploring, camping, paddleboarding, you know, all that stuff. And um, interestingly, ever since this experience, God has blessed me exponentially. Um, and it's certainly not because I'm so cool. It's just because he's so cool. And, uh, and he has just lifted me up and um, given me so much love and, and, it's kind of like Job, really, you know, Job lost yeah. everything and I kind of lost everything too. And uh, people, well, I don't want to get into that, but yeah, just the, the bottom line is I just have a, a much better uh, life now. So it, it changed me in that it made me love people and appreciate time so much more. And then it changed my life and that God made me financially prosperous. He gave me a renewed love of somebody that I, I can't wait to be with for the rest of my life. And he gave me better friends. Yeah. Paul comes in and, and um, says, when, when did this happen? Uh, how long ago did this happen? This was, this was years ago. Yeah. This was several years ago. This is several years ago. Yeah. 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 Okay. Wow, man. Yeah. Yes. It wasn't, it wasn't last month. 
Uh, this is uh, this is years <laughs> years in the past. I, I, interestingly, I just saw that uh, uh, Tom Goolsby uh, chimed in there too, and I and I just have to say, uh, Tom Goolsby, hey man, uh, he is one of those people who has been so so cool, so supportive. Uh, he's one of the people, interestingly, that I've been able to open up to and just share, you know, my sorrow and, and my hurt. And he was one of those guys who, who was just loving and accepting and, yeah. and had tremendous wisdom. If anybody, if anybody wants somebody wise, uh, look for Tom Goolsby. He's one of the wisest guys. I love that. And not a wise guy, just one of the wisest. Guys. Not a wise guy. Not a wise guy, but he's he, pretty wise person. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love that, man. I love that. You know, I feel like, um, you know, this is really important, especially, you know, for guys to hear, because with everything that's going on in the world right now, like, I think it's important for guys to have other guys that we can talk to about real shit. Yeah, um, that's right. I mean, it's important yeah. for everybody, but I, you can just hone in on the man, the man yeah. love for a minute and just be like, yo, mm -hmm. I think it's important for guys to be able to communicate what's going on, you know, the hurt, yeah. the pain, the sorrow, um, the suffering that we go through, um, the good, the bad, yeah. the ugly, because, you know, we're human beings. You got to get that stuff out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and you know, it, I'm I'm all about community, uh, yeah. even even with uh, with with my uh, my program here, Triangle Krav Maga. Um, our slogan is gear, training, community. But it's in that order. We give you great gear. Training's better, but nothing beats community. You just yeah. can't beat it. And so if you don't have other people that are that have a, a warrior edge to them, that they're, that they're in the fight, you know, uh, and that's that's there's a very manly thing. It's not just for for men because we got some tough ladies uh, that, that, that train with us. <laughs> but but the truth is, yeah, with men, when you have men that, that can say, I'll I will carry your burden with you, bro, I will do that. Yeah. Uh, boy, it, it just makes you so much stronger. And, and really the love. Uh, that, that you experience and, and the, the, the brotherhood of it. it and there's nothing like it. Yeah. Coming, coming it, through serious stuff with, you know, like, like you said, like dealing with some serious shit with yeah. people that, that are, that are willing to support you. It's amazing. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah. Susanna asks, um, what about the people that, you know, don't believe you? She says, do you get people that don't believe you, your story? Do you think it's because they may not have faith? Yeah, it's funny. I've actually never had anybody say, I don't believe you. Um, mm. But if I did, I'd be like, okay, you know, that's uh, <laughs> so, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not trying, I don't get anything from telling people this story. I don't, I don't make money off it. I'm not. So, you know, if you don't believe it, okay, that's fine. But you know what? Um, I hope that you, I hope that you at least think about what was said because uh, you know, I mean, I really did die. That's indisputable. I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I was out, man. And uh and the bottom line is there is a God, whether you want to believe in God or not. Mm. Um, there are evil forces out there. And, you know, I don't understand why people like why, why people even uh, go into n denial about that. You know, like, oh, I don't know if there's a devil. I don't know. Does evil exist? I'm like, dude, wake up. Yeah. Seriously, like, wake the hell up. I mean, like headlines like this 10 year old kid hanging out. Come on, man. I mean, yes, of course, evil is real. And if you think that you can fight it alone, boy, you're in for a you're in for a surprise. Mm, yeah. Um, Loretta asks, do you have a wider community outside of North Carolina? Uh, yeah, I do. Actually, I have, uh, I mean, yeah, I have friends uh, and, and uh, other Kravists and uh, political friends and, and allies. And yeah, absolutely. I've got family that's all up in Boston and they're the best. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if any of them are watching or not. I can't watch all of the, uh, the comments here, but uh <laughs> But I, I will say, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm very fortunate uh, to have friends around. And, and um, we do travel a lot, Greer and I, and we get to see some of those people. It's great. And I go up to New York so, a lot, too. Yeah. So I, I do you really? Come, yeah. Yeah. I get up there about, you know, once every three, four months, something like that. So, oh, my God. Well, next yeah, time, you better text me. next Grab time a you steak. Out, man. Yeah, totally, yeah. man. Totally. Totally. Um, Eddie was, like, really just impressed with the conviction that you have. You know, he says um, – he says, wish there was more people with as much convictions. Mm. I think that's important, man, because, you know, here, here you are talking about an experience that, um, that you know, you're not, you're not proud of. Um, no. But it's, 
it's a piece of your life that's changed you forever. And you're using this experience now to share this with others, whether they believe it or not, it's up to them. Um, and I yeah. love that because it doesn't matter what other people think of us. It, this is your, this is your truth. This is your story, you know? And, uh, yeah, and I yeah. love that because I think there's a lot, a lot we can learn from that. Uh, Loretta says, is there a website? For what? I'm assuming she's talking about for your, like, I would think maybe for the self-defense courses. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, trianglecravmaga.com. By the way, this, uh, we do not, uh, I don't uh, uh, talk like this at Triangle Krav Maga. <laughs> when, <laughs> when we're at Triangle Krav Maga, we are fighting. That's it, man. I mean, that we're, we're there to train. Uh, I don't even talk about my personal life at all. So this is, this is actually the first time that I've ever really uh, – Somebody's actually asked me publicly uh, about this. I mean, I've talked to all my friends privately about it, but this is the first time I've ever, uh, you know, shared this, you know, yeah. on a camera. Yeah, live. Live. <laughs> Where That's anything right. can happen. <laughs> anything. <laughs> Whoa. No, <it's... laughs> No, man, I love that. So why don't you talk to us just a little bit about where, what you're up to now, what you're doing. Um, you have a book that you've written or you are That's almost right. done with. No, it's done. Uh, yeah. Now that I will definitely tell people about. Uh, yes. So uh, it's, yeah. wait, is it complete? It is complete. Yeah. Okay. This it's is called your it, second book. Well, this is the first book that's that, that I've written just by myself. So I've contributed. I wrote the Krav Maga chapter for the self-defense book Safeguard. And I occasionally write articles for magazines like Recoil and Off Grid and stuff. I got survival stuff, you know, how to survive carjacking and, you know, like 10 things you need to bring with you in a hostile country, things like that. Um, but this is a, a, a historical fiction work called Infernally Yours. Mm. And it's, uh, uh, if you're familiar with uh, C.S. Lewis, the great Jack Lewis, he, uh, he wrote uh, The Screwtape Letters. I read it, and, yeah. Um, yeah, it's great. And of course, it's, it's the, the first book to be written from the perspective of a, a, a demon uh, tutoring another demon through letters. And uh, anyway, I thought that that concept was, was so great. He did the heavy intellectual lifting of inventing that, that storytelling device. Yeah. Uh, and I, I picked up that device and I, I ran with it. So uh, Infernally Yours follows a particular demon named Phage Rustcut, uh, who is uh, uh, working uh, with other demons. Uh, unlike uh, the screw tape letters, you actually hear replies in, in the letters. So you hear the voices of all these different interesting characters. But this is set uh, in the, uh, the colonial period and Rustcut's job is to kill George Washington. So uh, it's all about all of the crazy things that, that happened to George Washington. Uh, all the perilous things. He totally should have died. Washington should have died a, a 20 times over. Yeah. And these are true um, things that happened to him. True his things. Okay. His true things. Correct. Fictional conversations right, right, about right, true okay. things. That's exactly okay. right. Yes. Yeah. And so, uh, it, but it's very funny. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's black humor. It's, it's very, <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's devilishly humorous as, as one <laughs> reviewer put it. So, you know, but so, uh, but it's, it's uh, out on Amazon. If you want to uh, get it, you can. Okay. It's on um, uh, Kindle as well as paperback. Awesome. Very cool. It uh, yeah. It just, it just won an award actually. It, it, it's gotten, um, it won a, a, a small uh, editor's choice award and uh, there are a, a bunch of reviewers uh, that, that are saying nice things about it. So that's really nice. Cause this is my first time writing a book like this. So it's, it's great to get good reception. <laughs> I wasn't sure what I would get. Yeah, man. Congratulations. You know, I'm i I'm a big reader. My wife knows that. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm always reading on my Kindle and stuff. So what's uh -huh. the name of the book again? Infernally yours. Okay. So the name of the book is called infernally yours. yours. Now, as it turns out, there is another, uh, infernally yours book as well, too. That's not mine. Uh, mine is, well, says Molotov Mitchell. So, yeah. By Molotov Mitchell. Yeah, just make sure you look who the author is. Otherwise, you might get some, <laughs> I don't know, some some crazy book. book. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Well, I totally look forward to that, man. I would I would love to um, check that out. And I, yeah, can just find yeah, it on, I can find it on Amazon or do yeah. you have a website mm -hmm. as well? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, although it is something that, that we will uh, build. Right now, I'm, I'm talking to um, 
uh, different people. I'm, I'm actually looking for a literary agent um, oh. to help out with the book. By the way, if anybody knows one, let me know. Um, yeah. And uh, and at that point, then we'll we'll do the uh, heavy lifting, as I put it earlier, and go ahead and build out the website. Yeah. Nice. Very cool, man. Very cool. We got an Uncle Kenny from Arlington, Texas. Hey, Back Uncle Ken. The Punisher. <laughs> wow, you know he likes it. Yeah, I'm his, I'm his favorite. Thank you, Uncle from. Kenny. <laughs> hey, Uncle Ken. <laughs> we love that. We love that. He's the All best. right, so Molotov, I want to make sure that we hit on everything. I mean, is there anything specifically, anything else that you wanted to mention or say? No, not 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 in particular. I, I just uh, – I. I was drawn to what you were doing because, again, like I said, I really care about um, people and the memories that they're creating. I really care about um, the struggles that they're going through, and I, and I want people to support them. And I, and I just want to applaud you for what you're doing because oh, thank uh, you. I, ch I choose is incredible. And I remember seeing the first one about addiction. Um, it's just so well made. You're, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. yeah, you're a real technician. Great stuff there. Um, <laughs> thank you. Really, it was it was very, very yeah. I mean, well, hey, for those people who don't know, I was a filmmaker for for better part of, I guess, it was over ten years now. Um, and uh, it it was really edited well. It was great pacing. I loved it. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, everybody, Molotov Mitchell, you guys got to check him out. He's on Facebook. Um, do you have an Instagram as well? Uh, yeah, but I don't use it that much, but yeah, I, I tweet more than I uh, end stuff, but I, but Facebook is king. So uh, as okay. far as me, so Facebook, so, yeah. Twitter, Instagram, Molotov Mitchell, and the name of the yeah. book is called infernally yours. Make sure it's the it one is. by Molotov Mitchell. Yes. <laughs> and, dude, thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing the vulnerability. Man. I know there's plenty of people sure. listening in comments and I'm going to rebroadcast this and take some of these clips and post it up. I know that there's people out there who are suffering we're in the darkness who could really, really use this conversation to help them, you know, just get to the next step, you know, to just get to the next step. That's, that's right. That's right. And it, you just have to keep pressing on because the, the truth is, and I hope that, that people can understand anybody who's struggling. I hope you understand this. Your struggle is a gift. Mm. Don't think about it any other way. Your struggle is a gift. It is a God gives us the gift of struggle. Don't think that, that, that coasting is a gift. Coasting is probably a, a curse. It's probably a punishment for, for a lot of people. Remember, when you actually have to fight through things, you're developing character and building something that you will take with you for eternity. And, uh, and for me, I believe that literally. I believe that you are building the Eversuit. So keep doing it one block at a time. Never give up. God loves you. God loves you. Don't forget it. Yeah, man. Molotov, I love everything you're saying, man. Would you would you come on again? Sure. Any anytime. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, I'm gonna buy your book. I'm gonna read it. Awesome. Thanks. And then after I give it a full read, then we can uh, we can chat again, all right? Yeah, I, I would love that. And I, anytime you wanna come down to North Carolina, I'll buy you a steak. Dude, I'm and, taking uh, you up on it. Teach first, you you're, gonna things, come, yeah. you're gonna come to New York first. I'm gonna buy you a steak, yeah. so you owe me all something. Right. Then great, I'm going to come down there and I want some like hand, 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 hand combat, man. <laughs> you got it, brother. You got it. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Molotov. God bless Thanks, you, man. man. God bless you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody, for listening. If you'd like to support the I Choose series, you can visit www.ichoose.one. That's ichoose.one because it's one choice that can change our life forever. Thanks for listening.